Welcome back to the Vet SOS podcast brought to you by the Who You Know Network. Vet SOS is now a proud member and glad to be supported by the Parade Deck community. Remember, don't drown the sea of transition. Grab the Vet SOS lifeline. Eric, today, today is just an amazing day. We have the privilege to sit down with one of the most caring people in the veteran space, someone who Facts. is always willing to help out, whoever she can help out. Amber Kaluza is joining us to talk transition and her new adventure, new venture, Amber Adventures. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Say that three times fast. Yeah, no kidding. All right, I'm here as always with my co-host Eric Brew. Eric, how you doing today? Dude, this is this one's got me pumped up. I don't I don't know if we should say this out loud, but like Amber jumped in last minute um because we had a cancellation. But that is that's I mean that's a testament to who Amber is, right? Absolutely. Last minute, we need a hand. Hey, we need another guest. Amber's like, yeah, whatever, dude. I'll roll with it. I think we got her show notes at like I don't know ten o'clock at night. We're gonna roll with it. We're good. <laughs> Right. Um, but yo, this is my little sister, dude. This is somebody who has weaseled her way into my heart um, and is a permanent fixture of my family. She is one of my wife's dearest friends. She's one of my dearest friends. So I am pumped the heck up, dude. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> built, built her up. None now, at all. So. <laughs> None at all. Right. <laughs> uh, but absolutely right. I mean, when, when, when you want someone who's you know is going to be there, Amber's who you call. So let's yep. jump right into the introduction here. Uh, disabled Air Force veteran who served 12 years in aircraft and vehicle maintenance, postal operations, and cyber career fields. She loves to travel while also while also connecting in person with my wonderful network, friends, and family. I'm reading that in the wrong person. Uh, Amber created uh, Amber Adventures to share resources, but more so to encourage fellow disabled veterans and their families to live their best yeah. adventures. She loves mentoring transitioning service members and military spouses on what's next and how to stay mentally and physically healthy while also paying the bills, which we all know is always important. <laughs> Amber, we're so happy you're here with us today. How are you doing today? I'm doing great on this beautiful morning. Glad to spend it with you guys and so glad to be on to just share a little bit more of my story. And like you say, glad to be able to jump on. Awesome. Awesome. Got to make that money, money. Yeah. I can't wait to learn. <laughs> right? I can't. I'm hoping today we learn the secrets to <laughs> traveling all the time, but still making money. I, I expect to leave this podcast knowing that I can go quit my job and I can travel for the rest of my life and just enjoy it. So that that's what I'm expecting out of today's podcast. No pressure whatsoever. Uh, Amber. I'm taking notes. <laughs> oh Absolutely. man! W welcome to my MLM. Just kidding. <laughs> so. All right. So let's uh, let, let's start with your journey. You talked about being a disabled Air Force veteran. Tell, tell us a little bit about your your military service and, and your transition piece. Yeah, so I did um, 12 years Air Force veteran, both reserve and active duty, and I love my time. I spent most of it overseas, which I think really cultivated that travel and that space, because when you get out of the U.S. and you do your job in a whole different country versus stateside, right? What do we do? We punch out. You go home, right? You go back home to your dog, right? You can go to Walmart. You can do all that, right? You can speak English. You go to other countries and you're put uncomfortable and a whole different zone to learn. So, so I think it really just helped me grow right off the jump and being aircraft maintenance. They're like, what are you going to do? Um, work all the time, right? Everything's broke and you got to work all the time and figure it out. <laughs> so, like, like, I guess airplanes are of those, kind of right? important in the air force. Yeah. A little bit, just a skosh. So I, I think it, it really started me off on a great trajectory to talk about and really understand and value, right? My downtime, you know, when I get to do my education in school, the travel, um, meeting the Japanese people in Okinawa and just the culture, right? But really it was just, you know, getting out was different. I didn't get med boarded and I did not retire, but I had medical issues going on. And so I was getting to that time where it's going very rarely in our military career, do we get to actually figure out what we want to do? and say where we wanna be. So for me coming out, focusing on my health um, and figuring out what next was kind of, you know, kind of that after 12 years where I struggled a little bit, <laughs> right? But um, it was a good time for me to help support my family and also figure out um, for me what I wanted next. Absolutely. Yeah, the, the culture piece to me is just so important. I'm so happy that we were able to spend several years overseas, especially once the kids were old enough to understand it. 
because uh, you definitely get out of your comfort zone when someone's talking to you in a language you don't understand and they don't understand what you're saying and you're just staring at each other. <laughs> it becomes a lot of fun. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. love that. I, I think I think my experiences overseas were slightly different. Um, <clears throat> we were in a foreign <laughs> land, sure. It wasn't uh, tropical by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but people did yell at us in languages we didn't understand. Um, so, yeah. So, hey, I, I but I get it. I get it, right? Like setting up, setting yourself up for what's next is difficult, right? Yes. Um, yes, it is. How did you navigate that? I mean, I know that the Air Force kind of helped set it up, but, but yeah. there was still an action point, right? Like you had to actually start figuring out what was next. I I did, and it was really at a point, and, and people don't realize, but my exit was pretty quick. I actually didn't know from, and so from the reserve, right? You, you're wearing that, full-time essentially civilian hat and then that quote-unquote part-time um um you know air force reserve hat but it's not really part-time and it's not just two days a week because you got your troops you got to check in on and you got you know all of your work that you have to do for the military that has to be done before you get in so really though it was i was having more back issues um i was having more headaches there was just a lot going on and so for me to navigate it i'm just like well i don't know what's next but i know I have to focus on my health. And so sometimes you just had to punch the ticket. And so mine was a pretty quick exit. Um, but also too, I tell people when I transitioned from active duty to reserve, I was told that because I was going to a different state, they didn't have services to assist me, which we all know there's so many national services, right? That can help out. You know, somebody can always get great information. So there was a lot of misinformation, but I also didn't have the tribe I do now. So a lot more things, I was just a knucklehead and did it the hard way. I can do it by myself. I'm a grown woman. I've gone through the military. I can do this, right? And then I was like, oh, I can't do this. Like, this is, the struggle is real. I don't know what I'm doing because I didn't know what I didn't know. And I didn't know what was on the other side. So I really didn't have people at the time. I had one of my really good mentors and friends who did 21 years of Air Force um, duty to this day. Um, he has a very special place in my heart. Him is my fa him and his family are my Texas family. Um, and they really encourage me all throughout my career. But again, nobody tells you or you can't really know the struggle until you go through it on your own. So but I hadn't even started asking those questions till it was it was almost too late. Right. So till we are like, well, you know, we're, we're in the two minute last quarter and, and we got to make things happen. So it was very, very different than you know, um, what we tell people now, right? What we encourage people to do now. So it sounds like that could have been a springboard, right? So I, I'm going to go out on a limb here, probably because I know you, um, but I'm going to go out on a limb yeah. here and just say that might be why you are so passionate about talking to people about veteran disability travel. Talk, talk to us about that. So part of the the reframe, and that's what, it, what I've learned for me is I had to reframe instead of going, well, I can't do this. Um, I can't do that. I had to learn one to be okay to say with I'm a disabled veteran that it's okay to have all your limbs. It may be them not work okay so much all the time. And I think when when I looked at it right to me, disabled was a disabled veteran was being in a wheelchair, maybe having a prosthetic, but that's not what it is. We know there's so many invisible injuries um, that you can't see, or sometimes just getting out of the bed in the morning because your back hurts so much and you got to rock around in the bed <laughs> and you got to do some yoga stretches and some breathing just to get out, which is a true fact sometimes. Um, and so that's why for me, it was one, I want to encourage people to say, it's okay to say you're a disabled veteran and not feel like you're not worthy to say that. Like you don't deserve the services, like you are taking something from somebody else because I felt like, oh, if I took a service or if I said this about myself, then maybe somebody thought I was faking it. It wasn't real. It was in my mind or it was like I should just suck it up. Right. Embrace the suck and keep rolling with it. Keep taking your 800 uh, ibuprofen vitamin M. Right. And just and just go with it. So, I mean, and I was like, I'm not taking I'm not taking Motrin anymore. I'm not doing it. it it's not a cure all. Um, so that's really what, what drove me, right? You took the motors. It was, it was that. Took the motors. I'm not doing it anymore. So that really was what motivated me because I want people to know that they could travel. Because what do we say in service? I'm going to do it later. I'm going to hang out with my friends later. I'm going to take my family on a trip. 
But then we come out and we're like, oh my God, my legs hurt. I'm tired. I'm fatigued. Uh, I don't know why I have these headaches or I don't know why I grab my teeth, <laughs> right? All, all these things that we don't realize have accumulated um, over service, but that it's delaying us from living our best life and traveling like we want to do. So. Yeah, that's, that is so true. <laughs> I feel like she was talking to me. <laughs> A little bit. I just, I, just I, I I know those mornings that I've just sat there and it, it's almost, you know, just labored breath trying to, oh, here we go. And, yes. you know, it's always fun, you know, to try to reach your feet sometimes and put your <laughs> shoes on when, when your back's that bad. <laughs> um, so you brought up something that we hear, uh, we all know, I guarantee all of us know somebody who doesn't think they deserve the benefits or they're not applying for the benefits so someone else can have it. You know, what, in your opinion, what, what's the mindset there? Why, why do you think people are, are, are just refuse to get the, the resources that are there for them regardless? I, I think a lot of it is misinformation, right? There, there's a VA funding pot. So going for disability, Number one, we again, we think it's it's one scope, one line, it's one thing, and that's not what it is. And people don't realize it's injuries you that are new or that you've aggravated during your service, right? Nobody in the civilian world says, "Hey, go go take a you know a six mile hike with 120 pounds on your back, right? Here's some here's some boots that don't fit me, by the way, <laughs> right? Because there's standard issue for me is not so standard in the military." Right. And they're like, make it work. De deal with it. And I'm like, what do you mean deal with it? These boots are two sizes too big. Like, you know, you know I mean, let, I can't. Hold, stop hold on a second. Amber. Let me just let me just point out real quick that like er Eric is is stewing over there because he doesn't know what a yes. six mile ruck march is. That that's not in his vocabulary. That's that's that sounds like a warm up. Um, I think we do that before we do our. Bar. But no, what I was actually giggling at Sean was that uh, nothing is standard size <laughs> because for those who, of us that actually telling? know Amber, Amber is fun size. That's right. That's right. There's, there's plenty of dynamite here. I am 4'11 on a good day with shoes on in the morning. Right. And that, and that's what I tell people by the end of the day, it, it is not 4'11. Right. So yeah. And it doesn't and, take and, a lot of C4 either. No, that's right. That's right. So it's, <laughs> It's the funny part is we come out, right? Because what we're supposed to know, right? As an NCO, right? As an officer, as a warrant officer, whatever, whatever you do, you're supposed to be the subject matter expert. And I don't know, or I can't, or, you know, things like that don't come into play. So us asking for help is not a natural mindset. Us not being able to complete the task, the assignment is job is just not in our wheelhouse. And we also think with the VA disability, you think it's one pot of money. And so if I'm taking a piece of that pot, it's going to go away from somebody else. And that's not how it works. So I think that's part of the understanding um, where the VA comes into play. And also we get very frustrated. Oh, I asked them a question and I didn't get answers or it wasn't clear, or I don't know the process. And I'm so overwhelmed and confused with these organizations or one person said one thing, or somebody said, it depends. And we all know everybody's situation is there's a lot of it depends. And so there's not necessarily a clear cut answer. So that's where for me, it was just encouraging other people to go, you need to start talking with a variety of people because everybody's story is different. Everybody's interaction post service is different, right? My, my exit transition was different from Eric's, different from Sean's, right? Um, so that's where I was like, yeah, I, I didn't do it correctly, but I'm trying to encourage people who come behind me to ask those questions early so they feel mentally prepared for everything else that's going to come up that they don't even know about yet. <laughs> so. And I think, I think too, one thing that, and I'll just speak from my own story, right? One thing that I've learned and I am still learning, um, when you talk about like folks and their, their physical ailments, right? A lot of like it's not widely known that let's take TBI for example. TBIs don't start showing up until seven to ten years after the event. That's that's science. Right. Like you're not gonna argue with science. Like that's they they know that. So if you're mm -hmm. looking at if you're looking at somebody who you know deployed two years ago, 
and had something happen, or they were in a car accident and had something happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, TBIs are not just IED explosions, right? There's TBIs. No. You get my son's a Blackhawk mechanic. He whacks his head one good time, you know, turning wrenches. That can create a TBI. And right. so I think a lot of folks, when they do that, I don't deserve it's because they're not looking at the future and what the body is going, how the body is going to deteriorate, what it's going to look like. Um, my dad served just, you know, like just, he got out just before Vietnam. Um, mm -hmm. And so he did one of the, he was the, he was the vet that was like, I don't deserve it. I wasn't in Vietnam. I didn't deploy. I didn't go. But it took me until he was 75 years old to get him to start working on his VA claim. Yeah. So, and I, I completely understand that my um, uncle is a Vietnam veteran and we actually didn't even start talking about his service till I came in. Um, and I think it was just, it was a different mindset. It was a different Avenue, right? You went off, you did your military service, you came back, right? You, you had a family, you did a job. That was it. It was, a, it was a check mark, right? Different generation. It was a check mark to do. And so again, I, I encourage my um, my uncle. Finally, I was like, I'm not gonna have to drag you to the VA to like do this claim. And I go, he's like, I was just doing my job. And I was like, we're we're gonna go, <laughs> like you know. Um, but really, in, in the same thing, he said, he's like, I don't I don't get it. And he, and I said, look, I said, like you say, people are they things don't show up. Aircraft maintenance because I was smaller. I could fit into a lot more spaces, you know, that other people couldn't, right? So, so they're like, here's your fun size stuff. Welcome. Go, go get Amber. She'll fit in here, right? So, or just navigating <laughs> through through hydraulic hoses and things, right? Getting your arm stuck, whacking your head, whacking your back. But the other part was, and it and it wasn't, it was an aha moment when somebody goes, Hey, knucklehead, um, how many times have you hit your head on aircraft? or vehicles or sports injuries or car accidents. And so one time with the VA, sometimes we think it has to be one direct correlation. And I go, but we're not one person. We're not one experience. So why should our disability and injuries only be one? Now, sometimes <laughs> that can happen. There's one direct thing to make it easy to correlate a TBI or an event or some trauma. But like mine, I have chronic pain <laughs> and it doesn't, it's never going to go away. I mean, I wish it would. There are better days. I'm just trying to live at a five pain level. We get to that. I'm golden. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, that's my focus. <laughs> so. yeah. What level of pain is normal? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> Eric's like, I, Eric's like, stop, stop talking. To me. I'm, not, I'm not answering that question. <laughs> Listen, my wife is not here, but if she was, she'd be running in here to scream at me right now, just hearing that. Right. All right. So let's let's get into Amber's adventures. Tell us, tell us what Ooh. you're doing with Amber's adventures. Uh, what, why you decided to start it, uh, and and definitely how how we can all quit our jobs and start traveling for the rest of our lives and still paying our bills. <laughs> <laughs> well, I started it because Hope White said so, right? And what Hope White says, I do. <laughs> so, <laughs> but really, it was honestly five years ago, I would not have been talking about mental health, my mental health, how it affects my chronic physical injuries, and how my physical injuries affect my mental health. Because I felt vulnerable and it was uncomfortable, and I didn't want people to look at me differently, right? I, Right, I'm the strong one, right? I'm the one people call. I'm like, cool, let's go. Do you need me to pick you up? Hey, do I need to travel somewhere? Do you need a hug sometimes, right? Do you need a boot, right? What is it you need? Because that's what I'm so used to. And I felt like if I reached out and I said, hey, I'm struggling, people would look at me differently and treat me differently. And I, and I didn't want that. And so this is where that conversation goes. Maybe if we take that vulnerability and look at it as a strength, because I know when I look at my big brother, Alfredo Torres, and he shares his story, I'm like, man, that's the strongest guy in the room, right? If, if we do that and to be like, it's okay to have a space to say that, right? I reach out to my sister, Leslie Coffey. I'm like, sis, I'm not having a great day. I don't know why. I just wanted you to know, and I'm okay, <laughs> but I'm just, I'm not having a great day. And you'll, she'll walk it through. She's like, did you travel? Okay, if you traveled, guess what? Two days ago, okay, you traveled and then you were at a conference and then you were at a night event and then you probably didn't sleep well. 
And then did you actually eat and hydrate? Mm, uh, pizza for breakfast and dinner, right? Is not necessarily great thing to think sometimes, but so that those were all those things. But to have people in your tribe, you can lean into to walk into to say, I'm not having a good day, but then they help you work through those things. But I think that's also where we have to be authentic with one another and, and to share that sometimes with those struggles. So Amber's, uh, Amber's adventures came out from hope. And then Jennifer Burks, uh, we love my girl, Jennifer Burks and it's so creative. Um, she pulls the things out of my brain that I'm trying to say into creative ways that I'm trying to translate. Cause I was like, there's a lot going on in there. I, I don't know what it's trying to say, but, um, so, so, but again, I don't have to be the SME at everything. I don't have to be the best at everything. And I think that's, what's really helped me to lean into others. And so by reaching out with organizations like Wounded Warrior Project and finally saying, I'm struggling. But they were like, cool, let's, let's listen. I'll just sit on the phone with you. What do you need? What do you want? What, you know, and just taking those baby steps to go forward. So I like, you know, I love meeting people and, and post COVID, um, you know, during COVID, we made all these great internet friends, right? We, we met on all these wonderful webinars and things like that, but I really wanted that in-person connection because I wanted people to know that they're the same, my, my tribe and my friends, they're the same online and in these, right. In these webinars and things that they are in person. And also I got to share that because how many of us couldn't travel at the time, whether it's finances or physical um, limitations at the time as you're working that through. So for me, it was an opportunity to kind of bring this more together as a community and to go, hey, look else I met. I met Nadia and I met Seneca and they opened their home to me and, you know, got, got to have a lunch with Eric and Chiquita and, you know, um, just with Sean, having dinner with you and your family. And so it's really neat to go, man, these people have really cultivated their relationships and their friendships. And so that's really what was most important to me to kind of to kind of bring it along and kind of really turn Amber's adventures into, you know, consulting and really having that one to one coach. And we have great things like Betterati and ACP. But sometimes you need that person. You've started building that relationship to go. How can I have direct conversations and one to one conversations? Yeah, that's. That's true. Plus, all three of us can relate to the fact that when we show up and people see us in person, they're like, oh, my God, I didn't think you were that size. <laughs> yes. I, yes. Hold, hold on. I will, I, will never, <laughs> I will never forget showing up in Jack's to surprise Brian and Bruce and Amber and all those guys that were down there yeah. for an event. And I surprised everybody. And when I walked in and everybody's like, wait a minute, I thought you were bigger. <laughs> Where's the rest of them? <laughs> because like Amber, right? I'm not a big like I'm a I'm I'm a I'm a thick dude, but I'm not a tall dude. Right. Sean's like tall. seven and a half feet tall. So like exactly. he stands up this tall, right? Like I fit I just kind of nuzzle under his arm. And anyone that's going to the mic will get to see us because we're gonna stand next to each other a lot. Um but uh but I get that, right? Like when you show up somewhere and you don't fit what everyone thought you were gonna be, right? I mean, that's, that's the right. story of transition right there, right? You show up, you show up in, in the civilian world at your next job or at your next thing, and you're not what everyone around you thought you were going to be. Right. Yeah. And, and I get that a lot because there is still a misguided perception that military people are male. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Oh, you mean women work on aircrafts too? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can do that too. <laughs> like, um, oh, but you know, you did the admin stuff, right? You didn't, you didn't deploy. Right. You didn't do No, we deployed. And guess what? We need admins when we deploy. We need finance people when we deploy. Um, and I, so all those things. So having that context too, to have people see there are female veterans. We serve in, you know, just as wide capacities as our male counterparts. Right. There's, there's the same stuff we, we have to do. Um, and, and also seeing too, you know, part of it too was a lot of people think you have to quote unquote deploy to be injured or feel like you're disabled or have a thing. But we know so many, so many people in service, right? You might do 14 days here or 31 days here or 90 days. So, and those are all different experiences 
and people requiring you to do a lot of hard things in your job, right? But it may not be a quote unquote deployment. So, you know, it's getting people to understand all those terms and to be okay to say, right, I struggled here or I need help here or I don't know how to translate my skills in the military. You know, are they gonna want me? I'm just, uh, you know, I, I just worked on tanks or, you know, whatnot. So really just having those open conversations. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're getting to the point where we're running out of time, but I want to dive in real quick to, <laughs> as far as Amber's Adventures is concerned, how can, or what can people expect when they check, check it out on Facebook or on whatever medium you're, you're putting stuff out? I know you, you got some YouTube things you're working on, you know, how, what, what can people expect from Amber's Adventures when they check, check out what you're doing? I think the biggest thing is one, just start learning um, about their, you know, what their disabilities are, right? So the biggest thing, right, where I'm walking into that consulting to have that one-on-one -on -one conversations. What about when you get your VA rating and how to talk to the doctors and your medical team and your medical staff when you get there to be less frustrated? Um, so having those conversations and understanding somebody who's walked through it before, who struggled with it before. Um, and I can tell you because of that experience on what worked for me, um, and it can lessen that anxiety. So, you know, the biggest thing is too, is just partnering people who want to cultivate that community, cultivate that health and wellness and talking about these things, encouraging people to travel with some travel hacks. Um, so they'll get, you know, all those things when we hop on for a conversation, it's like, okay, where do I start? Because sometimes everybody's overwhelmed by all the resources out there. They have that essentially analysis paralysis of thinking about what if I pick the wrong thing? What if I'm talking to the wrong person? And sometimes you just got to jump in and you just got to start. Yeah, absolutely. Now it's good stuff. I, I love what you're doing. And I know I give you a hard time about how much you're traveling, but um, it, it, <laughs> it really, if nothing else, I think it's a reminder to us that we need to take care of our mental health. We need to take that pause. We need to find ways to get away with the family, spend time with the family. Just, you know, go see family. Um, so, you know, the holidays coming up and we, we all know it's a rough time for, for service members, especially those deployed and away from their families. So it's a good reminder that, you know, start, start making some plans now to, to get out and, you know, check on your family, check on your friends and take care of your mental health. Yeah. Um, exactly. I, I, I love what you're doing with it. And, and I haven't been on the uh, receiving end of a Hope White phone call. I completely understand. Uh, <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> what, Be prepared. What that, what that means. Um, uh, I lo love Hope to death, but she's serious, and, and it's all it's all in love and support. But she will push you to reach what you know. Yeah. She knows you 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 can accomplish. So um, you are an ultimate connector. You jump into every every conversation and and you contribute and you just want you introduce people to people you you just have conversations out of nowhere. I, I love watching your work um, and, and you know with Alfredo's Coffee House. You didn't even mention that one. You know through yeah, there you jump it. right in there too and and you help facilitate conversations and you're open and honest to remind people what's going on. Um, just absolutely love what you're doing. Love you. Love the fact that I'm here now as part of the Jacks Mafia mm -hmm. with you. Um, That's right. And some of the things we get to do down here. Um, as we get ready to close out, um, what do you want to leave the audience with? I think I want to leave the audience with just you're worthy. You're worthy. You deserve it. Don't feel bad. Nobody walks in your own shoes. You know what your struggles are. And it is not, it's not negative to reach out. That shows me that you're strong enough to know that you're trying to address those things. And so I just want to encourage people to do that, right? Start small, right? You don't have to right, tell the world, but start small. Reach out to Wounded Warrior Project, right? Reach out to your battle buddy, reach out to the VA, whatever you're comfortable with, just reach out because I'd rather walk alongside you through that struggle, right? Than to go to your funeral. Right. I, you know, we don't want to lose another person. Um, and I want you to live your best life. Right. I want you to travel. I want you to have fun. I want you to have coffee chats. I want you to be able to experience those things that you value. And I, I value those experience, right. More than things, 
I value this experience and I want to walk it along with my brothers and sisters. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, th I think we can just end the show like that. That's where we want to end it right there. <laughs> I love that. And that's what I think that's one of my favorite things about you. Amber is like what I know about Amber is that that's not because she's on a podcast. Right. And that's, there's, there's so many people out there like that. There's the Alfredo's, there's the hopes, there's the Sean's, there's the Amber's yeah. there's, there's folks out there that are like that, that it is, it is not what they say on a podcast It is what they, is the way they live their life. And Amber, you are one of those people that is the way you live your life. My wife has been on the receiving end of an Amber text that is nine pages long, <laughs> checking on her, yes. seeing how the business is going. Right. She has been on the, yes. on the, on the end of a hope call. Like we know what that feels like we know what that like we know what that level of support looks like so thank you so much for everything you're doing um i gotta ask as we're closing up here uh yes. what is the best place for the audience to connect with you right now it's on linkedin now down the road yes i will be doing that youtube channel to share more of those places and those resources um but yes <laughs> but it's those baby steps reaching out to me on linkedin and i'll have all my con contact information on there and my Calendly will be populated, but really LinkedIn is, is the best avenue right now for everybody to reach out and connect with. Awesome. awesome. Sean, any final thoughts before I close it out? No, I, I got mine in. I, I love you to death. Love what you're doing and, and just love that we can continue to take this journey together. Absolutely. Amber, thank, thank you again from Sean and I both and, and from our listeners. Thank you for sharing your time and your heart with us. We really genuinely appreciate it. Um, I cannot wait uh, to see you again soon because you need to make another trip up to Georgia. Um, but yeah, yes. man, I love you. I love you. And I can't wait to hang out with you again. Um, to everyone else, uh, make sure you follow and subscribe to us on YouTube and your favorite plat podcast platforms, please. Um, we'd love to have you, right? We just, we want to make sure that the people hear about this far and wide. Thank you for turning in, tuning into vet SOS. Remember don't drown in a sea of transition. Grab that vest vet SOS lifeline.